After Jesus' baptism, which embarked the start of a very special work that he would begin, the Holy Spirit led him to an isolated place in a desert. Jesus was in this desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Wow, that's a long time. But do you know what else, boys and girls? Jesus did not even eat during this time to show how serious he was about the work that lay ahead of him. Now, I know that you might be thinking, why would the Holy Spirit do that? Did Jesus not come to save us? How could he do that if he was alone in the desert? What you might not know is that there were quite a few people in the Bible that had what we call a wilderness experience. That means that there was a time that they experienced a tough and even challenging situation to prepare them for greatness. Moses spent 40 years in the desert in preparation for leading God's people, the Israelites, out of slavery in Egypt to the promised land that God had in store for them. Furthermore, the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert to be re-educated from slaves to free men and free women. And then also we find that the prophet Elijah spent 40 days and 40 nights in the desert to prepare him for the mission that God had in store for him. A very important work, but that is a story for another day. Likewise, Jesus was preparing for a great task and mission that he needed to complete. Now, do you know what that mission and great task was, boys and girls? That mission was to save you and me. Now, this was from, from sin and all the bad things and everything that hurt us. Jesus wants to save us from it. Now, during Jesus' time in the wilderness, someone came to see him. Someone you would never have expected. You see, boys and girls, Satan appeared to Jesus in the wilderness because he wanted to tempt Jesus to abandon his important mission of saving us. Now, Satan cares about no one but himself. As a matter of fact, he even hates God and wants to hurt him as much as possible. The best way that he can do that is by hurting those that God loves. That would be you and me. So Satan knew if he got Jesus to sin, that he would not be able to complete his mission of saving us. That would mean that God would be hurt more than we could possibly even imagine. So Satan had an evil plan to try and trick Jesus in being selfish. Remember that Jesus had nothing to eat for 40 days. So Satan thought it was a clever plan to challenge Jesus to turn stones into bread. Now, boys and girls, do you think this was something that Jesus could do? Of course, Jesus created everything. But that would be selfish to only do what he wants. So Jesus answered Satan in the following way by quoting the Bible. It is written that man will not live by eating bread alone, but out of every word coming from God. Now that's a funny thing to say, but what Jesus really meant was that his trust and his dependence was on God the Father. Jesus would not be doing something that was selfish, something that only he wanted. Jesus knew he was here on earth for a very, very important task. And once again, that was to help you and me. Suddenly, they were on the top of the temple. And this time, Satan really thought he was clever. This time, he decided to quote the Bible. But he would be clever and leave out bits and pieces that suited him. Satan hoped to trick Jesus by misquoting the Bible. Satan challenged Jesus to throw himself off the temple and said that the Bible says it is written 
that the angels will carry you on their hands and make sure that you don't even hit your foot on a stone. But Jesus knew that this was a trick and responded by saying, It is written that you must not tempt the Lord your God. What Jesus was really implying was that God is to be trusted and not tested like Satan was busy doing. Next, Satan took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him riches and kingdoms and said that Jesus could have all of this if he just fell down and worshipped him right here, right now. Can you believe that? That Satan thought that he could tempt Jesus to worship him. Now remember, boys and girls, Jesus was the one that created everything. Jesus was the one that created the world. He created you and me. He made everything. And here Satan comes and says, come worship me. Wow, that was a cheeky way for him to approach Jesus. Jesus finally said that Satan must just go away. Because the Bible says that we shall worship God and serve him only. Now Satan left Jesus upset that he couldn't get Jesus to sin. That he couldn't prove that Jesus was selfish. But Jesus was served and strengthened by angels. And so his special work began. You see, boys and girls, this story helps us know that when Satan tempts us and wants us to do something selfish and bad, that we must only ever quote the Bible to know what is right and what is wrong. The story also helps us to understand that we are never alone when Satan wants us to do something bad. Jesus promised that he is always there for us to strengthen us and help us even through times when we might feel weak. And that is why the best thing to do when we are tempted is to pray. Pray that Jesus would strengthen us, that he would give us the courage to stand strong, knowing that he stood strong when Satan went and tempted him. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful promise that you will always be with us even when we are tempted. Jesus, but we pray and we ask you that you would help us remember to pray when those difficult times come. May we not trust ourselves, but may we only trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, boys and girls, remember, when difficult times come and we are tempted and we are trying to do something bad, remember to always pray and ask Jesus to help us stay strong. Bye-bye.